Okay. Alright, what's next? That's next. Oh, pick one. We got three down here. Uh, anybody have a preference? No. Uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, we can talk about, like, Yeah, I have no preference for which to talk about first. Hey, we can talk about... Uh, I, I, yeah, never mind. <laughs> yeah. We should talk about them all at the same time. <laughs> okay, well, I'll take one, you take two, and you take three. We take one, and we'll start talking. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, it's because this one would be real quick, you know. It's like... it. Uh, well, this one won't be quick, actually. Uh, it's... Linux spyware, you know, we sit here and say, say, you know, Linux has less, this is part of why I think everybody should have a, the, the minimum standards for every computer, every computer, not regardless of platform, are firewall, antivirus, and anti-spyware slash malware. Uh, now, the anti-spyware slash malware is a debatable thing because it's only going to be looking for things that it considers spyware slash malware. And there's many things that are spyware, and it really comes down to how you define spyware. And uh, the, re the reality is you are spied on in Linux. Uh, but there's that fine line between paranoia and healthy skepticism. <laughs> Uh, and I personally think the type of spying that, for the most part, goes on in a, on a Linux box, at least as things stand now, because it's not largely targeted by malware, is things you should have some healthy skepticism about, but you shouldn't drive yourself nuts with paranoia. Uh, I, I don't know where y'all stand on that. That's, I, I mean... Uh, well, I, we were talking about how uh, a lot of these things are, uh, you know, checking installed apps Yeah, because the only way you can know what's the most downloaded application is to track who and how many downloads are <laughs> happening of said. And it really depends on, on how much information is being reported back. I mean, if, if all it is reporting is this has been downloaded, that's not spying on anybody. That's just watching server logs. Oh, no, no, no. There's privacy advocates that will go, they're collecting bits. I saw a zero move. You're spying! You're... No! That's my zero! You can't have it! <laughs> I think these people are nuts. But the privacy advocacy to the extreme... No, you can't collect any data. At all! And all people that must have uh, JavaScript disabled on their browser. Yes. The, 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 and, and, no, that's the fact. It, it really comes down to... Um, it, it, yeah, it's like, if you're a real paranoid nut, and you're really afraid of anybody collecting anything about it, here's your solution. I, I think the Onion summed it up best. You know, that big, white, opt-out building in the middle of the mountains that Google promised not to look at? <laughs> that, that really is what you have to do to opt out of all spying. Never use the internet. Never ha you have, if when you do, don't have JavaScript, don't log into anything. Don't, and never, ever, 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 ever. And, you know, it's... It, don't go to a store. Don't go to a store. Buy everything with cash. Uh, make sure you're don't wearing... Don't go into the store because there are cameras in there. Uh, no, no, no. You, you see, you have to be wearing a, a, a hat with all these little LEDs on it so it blurs out the cameras. And you have to make sure that you're very nonchalant while simultaneously being unobservable so you're forgettable. It's like, you can go nuts. <laughs> you really can. Uh, but I, I think you're going too nuts. Uh... And, and honestly, the best thing I've ever come across for protecting your privacy on your computer is, is a, it's, a, it's a real simple thing. Don't tell your computer who you are. If your computer doesn't know your name, address, and so forth, it can't accidentally go tell people this. People can reverse engineer it from your IP address, so you... But that's well, just, they can reverse engineer your general location. Yeah, well... 
possible. If I have your IP address, I can probably come knocking on your door if I really, really want to. <laughs> Uh, but so, and I'm not trying to make anybody paranoid. I'm just, uh, I, I, that's not. It, but really, you have to be a little three-letter agency and stuff to get access to the logs or buy access to the logs to get that level of track down. Public people legally doing that, like you're saying, general location. Like they'll get to your zip code, maybe your block, but not your house. Assuming you're not spoofing your IP. Exactly. It's like if you're really paranoid about that, use a random exit node. You know, <laughs> like I said, you can go nuts here. Uh, it, I personally could give a crap if the package manager in my distro was tracking what the most installed packs are. You know, what the standard configuration people are going for. If it's collecting anonymously, like general settings, because these are things that help improve the distro. You know, if, if the default menu is blah, 9 out of 10 people immediately change it to blah, that means the next build or update or release of the distro should probably have that as the default setting. You know, the, the other metric that's very useful, and I don't really care if my OS is collecting, is what is my screen size? Uh, uh, is web pages collect this all the time. M m the, the most common things web pages collect on you and the browsers take uh, like Chrome will spy this stuff and other stuff for Google. Uh, Firefox even does this in some configurations um, for Mozilla, but you know it's tracking what browser. But any web page you go to, what browser are you using? What's your screen size? What OS are you using? Well, this is useful information because it helps determine how they should be configuring their web page and whether they need to care about what browsers they're compatible with or not and so on and so forth. Uh, so, I, I mean, I, I don't know if there's really anything else we want to go on that. It, it, no. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, what do you, you want to go into the next thing? Uh, I have half a mind to skip that one at this point because we're running a little long. <laughs> but uh, 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 are you using GNOME or KDE? Me? Yeah. I am currently using GNOME. You're using GNOME. Jordan? GNOME. GNOME. And uh, OpenBox on my laptop. But you don't use workspaces? No. Uh, I do. But you do? Yes. Okay. Um, but you're using Mint, which is not standard GNOME. <laughs> it's a little tweak. Well, I mean, it is, but it isn't. Um, it's what these are different distros for different reasons, and the default conf uh, excuse me, different desktops for different reasons. The default configuration. And it really is the default logic. I, 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 one of the things that drives me nuts about GNOME is that it tries to overly compartmentalize everything by default. You know, each workspace is largely separate, where you go from works, but what, what I would call desktops, from desktop one to desktop two. Uh, it, it's, it's like you've left your whole environment. If you have any applications running on workspace one, you're not going to see them in workspace two by default. Well, for, for, for what? KDE? Well, for KDE, I will. But, like, I'll give you an for example. For I do. For, for like, I, see, I see updates to chat on all No, no, no. You see, uh, you see updates to chat on all workspaces. But, like, I'll give you an example. Uh, let's say on workspace one, you have five browser windows open. You're going to see the icons for all your little browser windows down there uh, yes. in, your, in your dock. If you switch to Workspace 2, by default in GNOME, you no longer see five browsers. It's like you have a fresh desktop. Okay. That's not how my workflow works. I, and KDE is 180 the other way. By default, every single application that's open on all desktops, what you would call workspaces, is down there. So if I switch from Workspace 1 to Workspace 2, I would still see the five browser icons down there. And if I open a new application, I'd see that down there, and I'd see it on Workspace 1, and so on, and so on, and so forth. Uh, the, the three settings, as far as I know, in GNOME are the same three settings they are in KDE. 
and this really is what kind of workflow you do and, and that is that little dock or smooth task which is the more common one in KDE or so forth can either have only show the tasks from the current desktop or workspace which is if you're one of these people who's compartmentalizing things by area that's the mentality you want the other option is from the current sc screen only which means uh, uh, and the other option is only things that are minimized uh, so by con combination of these you can uh, or by enabling these filters or disabling these filters you can either have every single running application on the system all workspaces or desktops because they're called desktops on one workspaces on the other be shown just the ones in your current area just the ones in your current workflow are just the minimized ones and it really comes down to how you're interacting with the desktop are you using the launch launch bar or are you using the dock are you using compiz and the expo and scale and all of that stuff? And I don't think there's a right answer to this. I, I, I don't know where y'all stand, but my, my personal opinion is this is one of the things that makes both of these desktops in the Linux desktop environment and General Sant is no matter which one you're a fan of, through configuration of these settings and the compiz effects, you can pretty much set up whatever workflow for accessing the stuff that makes sense to your deranged little head, regardless. Uh, yeah. Thank okay. you. I take it Jordan doesn't have anything to add there? That, that's, uh, I think I've talked about it before. That, that's one of my favorite things about Linux. It's always the power of choice. I, I, you get it how you want it. If you don't like it one way, there's always another option out I, there. I, I do have to ask this. Why do you choose not to use workspaces? I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't I, live without workspaces. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I, I have two screens, for one thing. So I have two different places. If, I, if uh, I had two screens, I'd just have more. <laughs> I, that and I, I, I spend more time with tabs in Firefox than I do with actual separate applications at a time. Uh, when I'm actually working on something, it's generally, I've got the web browser, I've got Caden Live, and I might have Audacity, but I usually close Audacity before I work on Caden Live, so maybe a text editor. I don't know, I might have at most six applications open at a time. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and at 1080p screen, I've got the, uh, the width to have a very large bar. Uh, let, let's see, I have a Firefox window open with nine tabs for this show, plus research I was doing behind the scenes, plus a document for post-production. That's, that's one of my desktops. My other desktop I have eight uh, text editors open for pages I was working on before we started, plus some research, four research applications for SEO running. Uh, plus a uh, browser window tied to that stuff. On the other desktop, I have all my play uh, browser browser windows and some private stuff. And then I have all my documents, like my time card, my various scribblings. I go through a sonomy. My computer is never doing one thing. I can't. <laughs> Maybe it's my ADD. <laughs> I don't know. I'm fucked up. I, I can never do steady workflow like that. The interesting thing is uh, uh, Linux Mint actually comes by default without multiple desktops. Really? Uh, yeah, it comes with only one. It doesn't really show to you how Linux has multiple desktops. Uh, like the command key for it works, but it doesn't have the little thing at the bar like Ubuntu does that shows you, hey, you have multiple desktops. Um, I, I did have to set that up later, and by default, it made it show that I had all the applications that I had open in every single desktop in all desktop showing at the bottom, and I changed that too. Um, but yeah, it, it does start out with one. Well, and that would be the good default of one. I, I always wonder about that, even though there are people like Jordan who will only ever use the one. I, 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 I've kind of always thought that the default for every Linux distro should just be four desktops. You can take some away or add some on, but it's one of those just to kind of point out, hey, you have this option to have multiple places. Because uh, it's one of those... Maybe it's, maybe it's for people that are converting from Windows. Make it easier for them. 
I, I, I think Windows needs this feature. I hope Windows gets this feature. It desperately needs it. <laughs> I, I, uh, okay. Now for the thing that we probably shouldn't talk about, but we're getting to. Because <laughs> uh, there isn't a right answer to this. This is entirely opinion. <laughs> uh, and so many people have said this, and uh, over the years, I, I, I think this comes around like every six months. It's like uh, Linux just Would needs to say it before the suspense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, Linux just needs a spokesperson. You know, they need somebody to get up on that podium and go, "I am Linux. Everybody's like me," and I don't think that's possible for Linux. <laughs> like, I. I mean, do either one of you think that's really even practical in any way? I mean, like, wrap Linux up in one person and one point of view. I think that Linus Torvalds is the official kind of spokesperson for no, Linux. No, I, I would classify Linus and Tux as the two mascots of Linux. I wouldn't classify them as the spokesperson. You know, the embodiment of I'm the atypical Linux user. That's what I mean. You know, like the the, the the idea is this is the embodiment or the archetypal representation of the atypical a user. And I'm like, what is an atypical Linux user? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, I, I don't think such an animal exists, and I don't think one ever should. Uh, that, right, that's yeah. that's my personal opinion. Uh, uh, Jordan, you're being strangely quiet on all of these. <laughs> it's like, well, uh, as far as a, a mascot, yeah, I, I do sort of agree that Linus is the uh, the embodiment of the older part of the Linux, the part that, that started things, the part that... Uh, but for, for the moving forward... I don't know. A, a lot of distros have moved in that uh, look at us, we're hip and cool also form. <laughs> I would almost be willing to bet someone like Mark Shuttleworth or John O'Bacon would be a good embodiment of where we're going. You sure about that? <laughs> yes. Shuttleworth has made some decisions that are questionable, but a lot of them are done with good intentions. Uh, best Bacon, intentions. On the other hand, <laughs> have generally good intentions all around. Yeah. It's uh, all about I don't, know, open, I don't know about as far as a spokesperson yeah. being behind any distro in particular. That, that's, the, that, that, that's the other thing. If if, if, if you wind up with then you pick up uh, if, yeah, if you wind up with a spokesperson, but, then it inevitably comes down to well, which distro do you prefer? <laughs> It's like well, <laughs> if, if you really look at it, you know, Ubuntu is the Linux for most people. It's what a lot of people think of when they hear Linux, and that's a shame to a lot of people, but well, no, no, it's so also that, 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 the distro that a lot of people to Linux. I, I, I have been saying that is wrong since the first video I posted, because there's just all these things that I do on a daily basis with Linux, many of them out of the box. That Ubuntu doesn't do. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's not. That should not be the flagship representation of Linux. I don't well, care. Well, I mean, but, but you know, it's. I, here's how I look upon Ubuntu. I look upon Ubuntu as a great base. That if OEMs want to make a Linux computer, starting with Ubuntu and it, using that to build a good system on top of. I don't know. It is a good I, I, th I think they'd find a way to make it worse. Well, <laughs> whether I mean, or not they do it right is a different thing like altogether. The OEMs of Android have been making of it. They tended to make it worse than stock Android. Uh, Jordan, have you frozen, or are you just in a really weird position? No, okay. <laughs> I'm, yeah. It's, <laughs> you, I'm sorry, it's late. It's been a long day. <laughs> you look like you froze or something. <laughs> uh, it's my brain that freezes. Uh, I, I don't I, think that it necessarily needs an official spokesperson. I just think that uh, it needs... Well, that, uh, that actually gets to a different idea, that it needs more marketing. Which is what I was just going to say, yes. Exactly. I, I think we're on the same page there. Yeah, well, and I don't necessarily think... But, you know, the, the, that, that's, you know, that's really addressing the same problem, is 
how do you market something that has no true form? It, 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 different marketing for different distros. Yeah, that, that's really what it would come down to. Um, you would have the market distros, yeah, that's true. I, I, honestly, what, I, what I've always wanted to see as far as a Linux commercial it is, like, I, I want to see a bunch of tuxes, like, in their different distro attire, like, fighting each other, yet fighting with each other, and I don't, I don't know how you would do that, but basically just like a fun tux bat, like, they're, they're sparring. They're not enemies, they're sparring. You, you know the what I mean? Is that's only a fun commercial for people that already know. Yeah, I, I know. It's like it's like you'd have to do something else with it. Like, it, I, 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 yeah, but it's like it would still be a fun commercial. It's like I, I just want to see. Uh, I, I think that the best way, probably, you know, a lot of people who use Ubuntu go on to other distros anyway. I mean, I think Jordan. No, you didn't start with it, but I started with it, and then I moved to a bunch of different things that I'm trying, and I'm still trying different things, but. I mean, that's how I got in. That that was Linux to me at the start, and that was that's how it was for a lot of people. It, so I think it's fine. That would still help Linux in general, even by uh, by just advertising whatever company feels like advertising desktop Linux. And right now, the one that really wants to advertise desktop Linux and has the uh, the company behind it is uh, Canonical and Ubuntu. Yeah, and I, it's it's not the worst foot forward that we could take. Oh no, there's plenty of worse no, foot forwards to push. <laughs> uh, it, it can have its improvements, but it's it's not it's not bad. Uh, I mean, I think that there's a lot of things that could happen. I think that the way Mint works and the Mint philosophy, uh, you know, the the whole elegance of Mint trying to keep everything very nice and pretty and clean, and this is how it works. I think that that works very well uh, to compete with, you know. Apple, you know, the, I think that, you know, if, if Mint were to advertise, you know, they would create a very clean looking computer that works very well and works, everything's all integrated, and that would compete with a Mac. But um, Ubuntu's not really trying to do that. They're trying to have like a nice, you know, works across everything kind of computer. Uh, I think that it'd be interesting to but, see. Well, the let's say that, 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 that's. Okay, we're, we're, getting in, we're getting off into why I. Think Ubuntu, what I think Ubuntu is doing wrong, but that's actually one of the things that I have a problem with Ubuntu, that they build themselves as this works across everything, works for sun, because there's a lot of hardware that out of the box, for reasons I can never figure out, that just don't quite work 100% on Ubuntu until you go do other things, and other distros, that's not the case. It's one of those, I'm like, I, I'm... I'm confused. It's like, because that's what you're billing yourself as, but yet you don't. <laughs> I honestly think, uh, you know, I, I heard one of the reasons they stated for having still a CD, CD be the main edition is for uh, creative um, restriction or whatever to help, you know, make sure that everything's, you know, optimized. But I think that they should be pushing the DVD, if only to include all the drivers as possible in it. Personally, what I'd like to see more. If nothing else. Yeah, personally, what I'd like to see more distros switch to is like the web install, like uh, where you just download a small ISO that then phones home during the yeah. install. What I don't understand is why it doesn't include all the network drivers that they've ever heard of. Oh no! See, and then, see, because once you have the network driver, you can download whatever driver you want. But. See, that, that that's the thing. That's one of the things I have to give Ubuntu a fail is that there are a number of network and Wi-Fi cards that just don't work out of the box, and I should not install my OS and then have to go to another computer with internet access to download my driver so I can finish installing my OS. No, 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 no. That That's a fail. Sound card, graphics card not being optimized, as long as the internet's working so it can immediately upload and fix that, I'm cool with. Network? No. Unforgivable. Because it's entirely dependent on the ability to phone the mothership. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know where Jordan stands on this. But <laughs> the, the problem with uh, 
more distros moving to the 100% net install model is there are still a lot of people out there with really, really slow connections and a lot of people with no connection. Well, uh, okay, but it, it, see, this is, there's a way to fix that in, in that um, you have a DVD install for people who need, need it here. Maybe a few DVDs, you know, it's like, and, and, you know, that could be the, oh, okay, you, this is going to take you five days to download, $20 donation, we'll mail it to you. You know, it's like that fixes that problem. And then for everybody else, the, there's the, you know, there's the zip down a hundred megabyte file that will then do a web install. Is that how it is for a lot of distros right now? It, 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 not as much as you think. It's getting there more. But, I guess I'm, I'm thinking of Arch, and Arch has a right. Small well, no, no, that, that's the thing. Arch is really ahead on that. Uh, but but of course, Arch has to go out and yeah. Well, that's sort of what you were talking about, though. Going out and doing the whole install from the web. Yeah. So it, it's you know, there's there's no good answer to that. <laughs> but, but like we, we've just pointed out that the Linux community is competing against itself in a good way. <laughs> Yeah. And and that's why I think the whole idea of a, a spokesperson is a little absurd. <laughs> Getting back to Do we the have point. anything uh, more to say on this, or anything else that we want to go to? Uh, I'm out uh, at least for this week. Is there anything else y'all want to decide on? At least as weirdness or anything else, or you want to just stop there? I'm good for this week. Okay, Jordan. Yeah, you look like you're ready to fall asleep, Jordan. So uh, on that Z note. <laughs> Yeah, peace out all. <laughs>